Hello, my name is Wade Nomura, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. In Rotary, we uh, look at trying to change lives, change the world by doing a number of things. And one of the focuses that has come up towards the front recently is the effort in peace. And that is peace in the world and also peace within the communities and within families and households. So with me today, I have Nancy Fisk, who is visiting us. She was recently the co-chair of one of the peace conferences that we had in the Paso Robles area. Nancy, welcome. Thank you. It's good so, to be here. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I was born and raised in Oxnard, California, and during that time I was a victim of violence and survived it and went on to leave Oxnard and go to University of Southern California for my bachelor's degree. I'm an occupational therapist. And for the next 27 years after I finished my training, I worked in mental health as a uh, clinician, occupational therapist, then as a uh, consultant to a developing mental health corporation, and then vice president of that corporation, and my mental health career at that point spanned 17 years. Then we made the move away from the uh, Los Angeles area to the central coast of California in Paso Robles, and thought we were going to go into a bed and breakfast endeavor, but decided we weren't done with mental health yet. So we went back to work at the uh, state hospital in Atascadero, which is one of the largest totally forensic facilities in the world. I was there for 20 plus years, went back on some contract work after my late husband passed away, and I've been involved in mental health and community service ever since we've been in Paso, which is 34 years now. Wow. The work pointed initially from the state hospital, our executive director wanted us to get acquainted with our community and interpret our mission as a mental health facility, although we treated a very controversial population of patients because they had all been committed by some form of the penal code. So I joined Rotary. <laughs> that was in 1990, and I've been in Rotary for 28 years now. I started in uh, Tascadero, where that hospital was, mm. then was invited to help charter a new cub in Templeton, which we went ahead and chartered in November of 2001. And in 2011 and 12, I was privileged to be the president of that club. I'd been their secretary from the beginning. And then my focus in my life turned more toward Paso Robles, and I joined the Paso Robles Sunrise, Rotary Club of Paso Robles Sunrise. And that was three years ago, and now I'm privileged to say and happy to say I'm the president of that club okay. for the years 2018 and 19. Great. Quick question for you. So what got you involved with Rotary? What drew you to the organization? The organization, as I studied it, provided a focus of my energy and financial resources to give back in a way that I could trust. I knew whatever work we put in for fundraising, the funds would be well expended, and then I learned about our avenues of service. And the club service is a builder of fellowship and bonding of human beings and people. And in a Rotary Club, we're pretty close. Then there's the avenue of service to the community. And that was the driving force when I was at the hospital. They wanted the management staff of the hospital to become acquainted with that community and try to erase some of the stigma of mental health. Whether people are penal code commitment or in a jail program or in a private psychiatric hospital, we're all people. We start with that common denominator. And it's not fair to have an unfair impression of, of a patient when they leave to go and try to start their life again. So the executive director really wanted us to get acquainted and interpret our mission, which we did. And 
we worked very hard in Rotary and gave back and it showed that we were just like any other human beings wanting to help. Then there's our International Avenue of Service and that opened a door for work that I've done for the last 17 years in Guatemala with a couple years exception. I wanted to build a playground in a colony that I was helping to build with Habitat for Humanity and I was in Rotary so I thought it'd be pretty smart to get Habitat and Rotary involved in a common project. And I was really pleased within the last two years, Rotary has now formed a strategic bond with Habitat. So I was a little ahead of time and I was happy about that. The avenues of service of vocational and new generations, of course, are critical to our world tomorrow. And they are also two of Rotary's avenues of service. So it was very easy to become a Rotarian and follow that direction. Great. So you're here, um, we invited you here to talk about your peace conference, which was, uh, I believe it was the first annual? It was, and it was, it was absolutely wonderful. We were probably nearly a year in planning, and in Paso Robles, we're still a small, small community, although we're approaching 37,000 people, 40, something like that. But we wanted to interpret the many avenues that peace can take in our world. And that begins at home. That begins at home with, with awareness that one is entitled to and has the right to live in a peaceful, supportive, loving home. It begins, the next step is in school, where children should be reinforced and supported by not being bullies in school and by doing the right thing and by helping each other and playing well together and studying well and preparing themselves for their, their futures. So that was a, a natural avenue to reach into the school district. We also have a good, excellent record for safety in Paso Robles and we thought that we wanted to include our local law enforcement to put their, their information out to the community about how do we support peace while enforcing safety in the community. It's very difficult, but being forceful doesn't lead to peace. Right. Communicating and caring about human beings, being honest and equipped and well-trained, absolutely, but Protective justice is the police department in Paso Robles, and we invited the police chief to talk about that. Then we wanted to once again reinforce the school, the importance of these years with our kids in school, and we invited the athletic director and physical education director for our school district, and he came and he talked to us about building young men and women through competitive sports that are not violent. And it's not about beating somebody to the ground to get a point. It's about healthy competition and feeling good about yourself and how you played the game. We were doubly blessed with that particular presentation because the athletic director had grown up in chaos and in a violent home. And he was able to explain and talk about very personally how important it was to observe our children in school and pick up the symptoms of an uncomfortable home situation or a child that was at risk or otherwise had some special needs that if they were not addressed, it could lead to other challenges down the line. So we had uh, the school district involved, we had the police department, we had um, our mayor talk about peace in the community and how blessed we are to live here in a community where there isn't war around us. And he talked about some of the community's plans for the future and our priorities for safety and our priorities for keeping the visitors to our area safe 
and generally closed our conference with us all feeling pretty good about where we were and what we had accomplished. There were other speakers. One of them was a naval air reservist who is stationed at Lemoore Air Force Base uh, outside of Fresno. And he talked about peace being personal and how important it is to, to contribute to a peaceful life for your family and to continue. He's a consultant to the Department of Defense. And he's still giving, after his retirement from the Navy, he's still giving his perspectives and consultations for worldwide peace and national peace. We had one other, we had several others, but another interesting speaker to me was a Navy helicopter pilot. And he's a member of our Rotary Club now and a member of the EOD Warrior Foundation. And EOD is Explosive Ordnance Disablement. And these are actually the bomb squad that go into areas where explosives have been left behind and try to disarm them so that others are not injured by that. And he is very passionate about that and is um, a driving force in our community to remember our veterans and the service. And whatever part those men and women have played in their deployment, they've done it to keep our country safe. Great. Let's jump into some pictures. Um, you brought some pictures along with you showing the event. The first picture is a, a picture of uh, the backyard, I believe, of where you had your uh, evening reception prior to. Tell us a little bit about your idea of how and where you decided to have that. Well, that, that was one of the blessings of being in a small community. When I started talking about our peace conference with our peace chair, Lindy, and our host for the day, Dan, my friend who lives where this picture is taken <laughs> said, let's have that reception at my home. And I said, really? <laughs> And that was all it took. Yeah. And we started planning what it was going to look like. And the at end of the pool, you see some kind of uprights that look gold. Those are helium balloons that spelt out the word peace. Right, right. And then we had another set of them across from the pool. They're not mm -hmm. visible in that picture. Right, right. And when people were arriving, they came in and they saw the the pool and the peace and the balloons, and they arrived to flute music. Mm -hmm. We had a, another one of our club members' wife is involved with the Central Coast Chorale, and she brought her, her a small group of the chorale, and the director of the chorale played the flute for the first half hour or so while gather, people were gathering. And then we had the full, not the full, but the guest chorale sang, mm -hmm. and they, they did some beautiful, beautiful music as the sun was starting to set, and Paso Robles' lovely little breeze was coming up yeah. in the evening. Beautiful evening, yeah, that's right. And then we had another member of our Rotary Club's daughter uh, is a ballerina, and his wife choreographed a special production of a ballet number to a poem that her father had written, and it was peace. And he is recorded it, and then they played music with it, and they sang. And he's a 101-year-old veteran, right, right. and he was also the opening speaker, if you will. He did our pledge, mm -hmm. and he talked about to whom are we pledging, and what are we pledging? And what does that mean to us today? And then we had the Pledge of Allegiance. So the evening was lovely. The whole patio was decorated with olive branches mm -hmm. and just pretty twinkly lights. Mm -hmm. I wanted to release doves, but that time of day and that part of the year was not good. Yeah. So we're not going to harm any doves. Good, good. And I noticed, too, you had just about all of your members involved with that reception, too. So that was very nice. We did. Very we nicely were, done. We were so proud. Thank you. And we were so honored to have you there. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But it was fun. Mm -hmm. It was fun. And 
about seven of the people that were key to that event and a couple to the day next day were not Rotarians yet. <laughs> but we did have, a good job. We have captured that good. one of them now. Good Thank for you. you. Thank you. And the next picture you have is uh, one of the other speakers. I believe she was an ambassadorial scholar, correct? Or was she a peace scholar? Oh, she was a peace scholar. She is um, the founder of the Petra Peace Foundation, which is doing work to build flexibility and resilience in peace volunteers. She's from Spain, mm -hmm. and she flew in to talk about her work in Jordan and other battle-torn areas, and the emphasis is to help the people who are peace builders survive and stay healthy right. and be able to return and do that work and not sacrifice their well-being. It's, it's another form of PTSD when you're involved yeah. with the intimate contact of school teachers and children and people living in those areas. That, that was pretty fascinating. She talked about um, actually spending a lot of time with those people that work with the traumatized people mm -hmm. in trying to bring that back down balance for them so they can continue the work that they're doing. Exactly. That was quite fascinating. Next picture we have is a picture of the group, the crowd. Um, you had a pretty good turnout there for, for the club sizes you guys are working with, so outstanding for that. Do you remember offhand how many people you had there? We we were counting tickets right up to the last minute, uh -huh. but we had 99 seats available, and we had probably near 80 seats sold. And because of the local fire ordinances, that worked out very well because we were able to have some of the speakers who wanted to stay and hear other parts of the conference. There right. was room for them. Right. And we had some of our sponsors came. We went out to our local community and solicited sponsorship for the conference so that we could make a donation to the speakers, Petra Peace Foundation. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to have money to give to, of course, Rotary, the Rotary Foundation. And then we paid a honorarium to our keynote speaker, who was Paul K. Chappelle. Mm -hmm. And then we served a lovely lunch and generally did well <laughs> and were happy. Good. So let's jump into, uh, we have a picture here, a couple of pictures of Paul K. Chappelle. So um, one of them, tell us how you invited him, how you found Paul, because he's a fascinating gentleman. He really is. Paul, the first time I saw Paul, he had been invited, invited to speak in Paso Robles on a Sunday afternoon to another group called the Paso Peace Community. And Lindy, the co-chair of our event, called me and said, Paul K. Chappelle is speaking. And I didn't know who Paul K. Chappelle was, but Lindy said, come, and I said, I'll be there. And I, I went there. And he is a internationally known speaker, and I didn't realize that at the time. He is a graduate of West Point and was deployed to Iraq three times, came out of service as a captain, and has written a series of seven books that give us the foundations for believing that peace is possible. And he talks about the, the human needs, Maslow's uh, hierarchy of human needs, but he really talks about some things that are not prioritized as much as, according to my, my uh, Maslow was food, shelter, clothing and that kind of thing. And Paul talks about it from the point of view of people need to belong. People need to be recognized. People need to have answers to their questions. And so he's reframed that hierarchy as the basis for a curriculum for teaching right. peace. Yeah. And how we, we heard about him there, immediately invited him for actually September 21st, which was going to be Worldwide Peace Day. Mm -hmm. And he had agreed to that. And then I got a call back in uh, sometime before June saying that he had another invitation on the 21st 
that would expose him to a whole district of Rotary in the Northeast, and could we change our day? And we said, of course. <laughs> so we had our conference on the 14th, and then Paul came back to Paso at the invitation of an artist group on our park in the downtown little city to talk once again. I went to hear him, and then he came to our conference, and then he was at our district conference last weekend. Right, right. Now, when you were um, given, uh, he was given an honorarium, I believe, on the behalf of the club also. So yes, tell us a little bit about that. He was given... He was given a Paul Harris Fellowship, which is one of the one of the first goals that people in Rotary, one of the first goals I started striving for, I wanted to be a Paul Harris Fellow. And what that means is, among other things, that $1,000 has been contributed to the Rotary Foundation on behalf of uh, an individual or a cause or whatever. And we wanted to give Paul that recognition because of his incredible work with eradication of, or maintenance and establishment of peace around the world. Right. You had mentioned air, Rotary's areas of focus, and with the near eradication of polio now, our areas of focus, the first one is peace, seeking peace. Correct. Correct. And the last picture we have with the group shows a, a group photo, actually, of some of the speakers. Um, if you want to identify or recognize any of those people, and possibly maybe some of the committee people that weren't able to make it. Sure, I'd be happy to. Sure. The lady to the far left is Lindy. Mm -hmm. She is the uh, Peace Builder Club chair for, for my Rotary Club, mm -hmm. and she and I work together on this uh, peace conference. The next lady over is Sandy Schwartz, and mm -hmm. She's the district governor mm -hmm. of uh, District 5240, right. and she introduced our keynote speaker, Paul K. Chappelle, okay. for the conference. Mm -hmm. The next gentleman is Dick Bloomquist. Mm -hmm. He's a World War I veteran who read the peace poem and led our Pledge of Allegiance. He's the father of the lady who brought the dancers to us. Mm -hmm. And the next lady is Bianca Neff. She mm -hmm. is the founder and executive director of Petra Peace Builders. Mm -hmm. Then we have Dory Stone. Mm -hmm. Dory is the executive director of Common Ground, also an organization looking for common ground between people, as well as care for the earth and other projects locally in our community. Mm -hmm. The next person there would be you, right. Wade. And you opened our conference talking to our community about the Rotary Foundation, and you shared your personal background with the experience your family had as in being interred after Pearl Harbor. Right. And that was very moving. Well, thank you. And we've had a lot of feedback about how, how strong and how much that meant to people. So again, I get to thank you for that. <laughs> My pleasure, thank you. And then there's me mm -hmm. in the yellow. And standing behind me is Dr. Dan Mead. He was our host for the day. And he took all of the speakers and coached them toward a common thre thread. We wanted diversity in the term of Anybody can contribute to peace. We need to raise our awareness and we need to talk to each other mm -hmm. and have mutual respect. And in a world where you can be anything, be kind. And he, he contacted all of our speakers. It was, I think we had 15 or 16 speakers and it was pretty tight, but they all talked about peace as possible from their unique perspective. So Dan was our host for the day the next person here is a past district governor, uh, Loretta Butts. I think she was district governor in 14, 15. But again, uh, she started her rotary career in Atascadero, then helped charter Templeton, and now has gone back to Atascadero, which was her home club. Mm -hmm. But she's been very active in the peace building within rotary and She's probably gone to every 
international convention since she has been involved in Rotary. She brings a broad uh, mm -hmm. background in Rotary work. Then the next person is Steve Martin, and he's our mayor. He is, I've mentioned him previously, he's running for re-election right now, <laughs> and he is a kind, compassionate, good, level-headed representative for the community, and he, he did the wrap-up talking about the joys of living in peaceful Paso Robles. The next person is uh, Rich Clayton. He's the athletic director and physical education director for our whole school district. And he is full of energy, and it's infectious. I went to his intramurals for the whole school district, and as each event concludes, the winners are on a podium, just like at the Olympics. They have a medal, and they are recognized and reinforced for their sportsmanship, their success, their training. And to the very far right is Paul K. Chappelle. Right. Very good. Our, our keynote speaker. Now I notice which is actually kind of interesting, coincidental or not, but um, you and Lynn D., the other co-chair, actually served as presidents the same year, and that was the year that I was serving as governor. So mm -hmm. congratulations mm -hmm. to the two of you. You've come a long way. Oh, thank and you. And doing a lot of good. Now, you're also current president, also, correct? I am. I'm president of the Rotary Club of Paso Robles Sunrise, and we were both parts of the crew of Nomura. <laughs> That's true. Very good. Thank you. We have a, a few minutes left, so give us a vision, since this was the first annual, which direction you're planning on going for the next one? Since it's going to be, you talked about a second one, a second annual. Yeah. That is absolutely fascinating question. Last week, no, two weeks ago, at our Rotary Club meeting on Wednesday morning, a friend of mine who was a charter member of Templeton came in. His name is Rex Swan, and he has done a, <coughs> pardon me, large amount of work on some potentials for peace and obser observations he made back in 2006 and seven, And uh, Lindy, our peace chair, is going to have a sit-down meeting with all of us in the next probably couple of weeks to talk about his vision. And that came out of hearing about the peace conference. And he came forward with this work that he did, but he hasn't moved it anywhere. And then I was contacted by a a company that knows the founder of Kind, K-I-N-D, protein bars and mm -hmm. I think healthy right. snacks. Right. And his name is David Leibowitz, I believe. And they're encouraging us to invite him. His work with the development of this company, all of his profits after he meets his expenses are going to third world countries to help with village banks and families in need come forward and have some sources of income. So that's an excellent potential. And then I learned through some reading I was doing about our southern borders and the, the immigration discussions that are taking place now, a sister, Teresa Pimentel, and she's been doing wonderful, compassionate work along the border helping families who have been disconnected from one another, trying to get medicines for people who are suffering from illness while they're waiting for the processes to begin. So it uh, sounds like you overall have a pretty good lineup of things coming up uh, for the future. Are you going to be involved with that too, I believe, right? Absolutely. Out. God willing, yes. Well, very good. Uh, Nancy, thank you very much for your time and for all the work you're doing for, for peace around the world. Um, I'm hoping it's successful. I would love to see more international people coming. You, with all the work that you're doing, it's going to be an outstanding one for the second year. So with that, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for providing a <laughs> platform to talk about Great, this. Thank you. And for those of you out there, um, take a look at that. Next year, about the same time, we will have the Second Annual Peace Conference in the Paso Robles area. And with that, thank you very much for joining us, and we will see you next time.